Guys, I'm feeling pretty stupid. Just two days ago, I filmed a video on AMD Fidelity FX, and it is a great feature for boosting frame rates on some lower end hardware. And in that video, I just kind of breezed over the Athlon 3000G. And I did it a massive disservice by not overclocking it. Because at $50, the Athlon 3000G is not only cheaper than Cyberpunk, but they actually deliver you a product that works. So the Athlon 3000G right out of the box has a 1100 megahertz iGPU and you can overclock it to 1600 megahertz which is a massive improvement over stock performance. And not only that, you can also overclock the CPU itself which is just a 2 core 4 thread, I think it's a Zen 1 part, and you can overclock it from 3.5 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz, I usually hang out around 3.9 because I feel like 4 gigahertz kind of starts getting on that unstable edge. But in today's video, I want to go more deep into the Athlon 3000G because it really deserves it. It's a great part and I feel like Fidelity FX really gives it even more uh, opportunities to shine. So just on a side note, this is the stock Athlon 3000G cooler. It comes with a cooler at $50, so I don't know how cheap this cooler is. I'm running it with the slightly bigger Ryzen 5, Ryzen 3 cooler that you get with those parts. It, I'm sure it makes a tiny difference and it's not all that expensive to get one of these. Like You can get one of these super cheap off of uh, eBay, Amazon. And uh, for the probable performance increase, I'm sure it makes it just slightly more stable. All right, so currently I have it loaded up. I have two games I wanna try out. I have the King's Hunt playtest and the Rift Breaker demo. Uh, both of these games are free on Steam. So if you wanna try them out, just go right to their Steam page. Uh, King's Hunt shows like sign up for playtest, but you just click OK and it'll let you play it. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up King's Hunt and we're just gonna be sticking with 1080p today. Like I'm not gonna play with 720p or any of that. I'm gonna go straight for 1080p. And honestly, that's a lot to ask from this tiny little iGPU. <laughs> Let's go ahead and load up a private game. All right, so right off the bat, I have everything set to low, 1080p full screen. And surprisingly enough, it's getting 20 FPS, which uh, is it's not, in my opinion, a playable experience, especially when you start getting some uh, textures on the screen, like other characters using their abilities. I'm sure this will uh, tank down to like less than 10. But let's go ahead and turn on our ultra quality preset. Right away, that takes it a few FPS, if that. But once you enable that performance preset, you get over 30. It's not, it's not great by any means. Like, you're not gonna cry home about 30 FPS, but it does make the game very much more playable than 17 FPS. All right, so I'm gonna quit out of here. I'm gonna go ahead and launch the Rift Breaker. Now this game, uh, in some of the preliminary testing I was doing for uh, preparing for this video, this game doesn't like to load in at 1080p on the CPU. Uh, I don't know if it's saving and loading in at the same time is uh, just too much of a hit on it, but let's see if it'll just start the pro lag at 1080p. Alright, so we're loaded into Rift Breaker. It is a very painful 11 FPS, 10 FPS. You can see our GPU clock is, uh, our GPU load is maxed out. Let's go ahead and turn on, God, even the, the menu feels bad. Let's go ahead and turn on our super resolution. I'm just gonna go straight to performance mode. Like, <laughs> we're asking a lot out of this thing here. So we're up to 20 FPS. Just rounding up to 20, it is uh, it's still a very painful 20 FPS. Once you start cle clearing some uh, foliage on the screen, <laughs> the FPS starts improving. <laughs> like, look, we're up to 24 because there's nothing on the screen. All right, let's go ahead and shut this thing down, load in an overclock, and see what it can do. Okay, so we're in the BIOS. I already have the XMP turned on. I didn't want to run it with that many settings changed. Like XMP is kind of a standard setting that you want to have enabled 
regardless. So let's go ahead and just turn up the voltage real quick. I like to keep it just, just under plus 200, two, 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 tenths, two tenths of volt. I'd like to keep it just under two tenths of volt. And then I also want to add just like 0 0.05 to the, uh, the SOC. It just makes it a little more stable. All right, so after we set the voltage up slightly, we're going to go into advanced frequency settings. And then for the graphics clock frequency, we're just going to hit it with 1600. And then the graphics core voltage, we're going to leave that alone. Uh, or I'll just do 1.3. I think 1.3 is a good voltage for that. I don't remember. It's been a while. Set the CPU core clock to 39. And everything else, just uh, leave it alone. All right, so now that we're in, I just want to verify that all of my settings stuck. So right now we have the GPU at 1600 megahertz, which is good. I'm going to load up CPU Z. Make sure that the CPU is overclocked correctly. So we're showing roughly 3.9 gigahertz on there. And the, the core voltage on here is kind of glitchy. It's, it's not right. So all my settings saved correctly. We have MSI Afterburner open. So let's go ahead and load up the King's Hunt playtest and see how many more FPS we get now that, uh, now that we're overclocked. This is a very huge overclock improvement that the Athlon can achieve. Like, it's almost a 50% on the GPU, and we were already GPU bottlenecked. Like, we were showing 100% GPU utilization. The CPU overclock is just kind of like a, uh, a bonus. Like, it's not CPU bottlenecked by any means. It's definitely GPU uh, bottlenecked with the iGPU. All right, so with it off, we're already seeing over 20 FPS, like 25 FPS. So it's a solid 20% improvement in just your baseline FPS. I'm just gonna run around a little bit to uh, get some side-by-side -side footage. So it does a really good job of staying above 20 FPS where before it was dipping down to like the 17s. And then if we hit it with that performance preset, we're over 40. So before where we were hovering around 30 FPS, we're now over 40. And this should definitely do a good job of keeping your FPS over 30. Now, it this is 1080p. The game looks pretty good. Uh, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, with the performance preset, it's not nearly as bad as it was at 720p. And you're getting 720p performance with uh, 1080p quality. So the game doesn't look terrible, obviously. It's not as good as it could be, but we're playing this on an Athlon iGPU, which is insane. Let's go ahead and check the Rift Breaker. That game is seemingly more demanding. All right, so the Rift Breaker demo. Uh, before, I think it was getting 10 FPS, 1080p. So this is with it off. It's it's getting about 50% more FPS than uh, without, but obviously 15 FPS is no uh, playable experience. So let's go ahead and enable our Fidelity FX Super Resolution. Turn on performance mode. And this is far more playable. Like it's not a great experience, but 25 FPS starts to feel in the realm of playable. Like I even saw it hit 30 there. So yeah, with the overclocked Athlon, we saw some huge gains. Like games that you would not otherwise be able to play in 1080p start becoming kind of uh, possible. I wouldn't say that it would be an enjoyable experience, but I'm really looking forward to seeing more games come out with this and, you know, less demanding titles to where you can take an Athlon and where you would usually get like 30 FPS and then start seeing 60 FPS. Like that will be really impressive to see. And obviously the Athlon itself is very impressive. Like being able to overclock something nearly for 50% on its own is 
hugely impressive, but uh, for Fidelity FX to come in and double the frame rates almost, like that is going to be a game changer as far as lower end hardware being able to exceed any performance expectations we used to have for it. So again, I'm really looking forward to seeing more titles come out with this. It looks very promising as far as uh, developers saying that it is very easy to implement. So hopefully it is very easy to implement. We can see games like Cyberpunk where most people's hardware really struggle with that game. And you know, DLSS is tied specifically to RTX cards. And honestly, the, the ultra quality preset on, on Fidelity FX looks really good. I wouldn't say that it looks better than DLSS, but side by side, it's really hard to tell. And the performance uplift is very impressive. Once again, hats off to AMD for creating Fidelity FX. It seems to be a very promising software. And that's really gonna do it for today, guys. Uh, get subscribed, like the video, leave a comment. Let me know what you see with whatever hardware you're running. I, I see it more and more to where it'll, it looks like it just runs on anything. So I'm gonna go try out some random hardware. Hopefully I can bring you more videos on this topic. I'm trying to post every day, so get subscribed for that. And like always guys, we'll see you next time.